you have to go back on track? Well, you should do, basically what you should do is three healthy meals and two protein drinks. You know, measure out your portions. Have, did you, have you gotten away from portion control? No, that's that, 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 that. Because guess what? That eyeball becomes from a, a half, I see him shaking his head. That eyeball goes from a half a cup and it's still, when it's a full cup, it's still a half a cup, right? right. And you need to journal down okay. for breakfast. So just, if you don't mind, telling us what you normally eat. All right, but you're not measuring it. So you no. really have no clear idea of what you're getting in terms of portion. Start measuring. And remember, three, maybe probably about three ounces of protein and then you're going to have your car you're going to eat your vegetable and then you're going to have your healthy carb what is a healthy carb it could be brown rice it could be it could be sweet potato yeah you have to measure everything because if you don't what you really think is not probably what you're really getting and i would journal breakfast till you had a scrambled egg an example scrambled egg okay um and maybe you had, I don't know, maybe some a half a cup or a quarter cup of oatmeal. That's breakfast. And then maybe you had a snack was your protein drink. So, so if you had that protein drink for breakfast, you know, that's what you have. But then you're gonna need to do a snack, you know, about two and a half, three hours later. I mean, and a, and a healthy snack. Yeah. That could be some yogurt. That could be um, some string cheese. It could be some deli meat. Okay, but you have to get, you know, and it's really important that you track your food in terms of how many calories you're getting, how many, gra how many grams of protein you're getting, and you're not going to know any of that unless you do what, guys? Do you have a, a tracker, a Fitbit, or a MyFitnessPal, anything like that? Do you use it? If, if, if you don't use it, it's no use having it. You have to, and you know what, it boils down to at the end of the day, we have to own what we're doing. And you're owning it because you're talking about it. But this is, this is that period of time where people start to backslide. Actually at that point, I, I look at it that, I don't know anybody else, but I look at it as like, okay, I'm, I'm just like, even though I have a tool, I'm just like everybody else now. You know, it, I, I have to work at it. I have to be accountable to it. But you're, you're where you need to be. You're here. Well, and the big issue is, is that you're reaching out. You know what? Most people don't get this far. They don't come and say, I'm having a problem. Seriously. Can we give her a round of applause? Because you know how many people? on Dr. Yadiger's Facebook page or when I send out the emails and they respond back and I get those and they'll say, I'm struggling, I'm too embarrassed to come see you, I, don't, I didn't reach my goal weight, I've regained, I can't even bring myself to call the office. So the fact that you came in and when this hits his Facebook page and those patients hear you mm -hmm. say that you had the courage to come in at four years and say, I'm struggling, and really, at 10 pounds, I still think you've done an amazing job. Yeah. So, but that you come but in- But you've got a handle on it. And you've asked for help, and you're, you're taking input, and you're here to say, gosh, I haven't done that, I haven't been doing that, and, Liz, and you accepted Liz's um, input, that's amazing. So for all those other patients, we're gonna use that so that they can, um, they know that it's okay for them to come in and do that too. Because it's, well, that's a, it's so important, and I even say that in my, my education class. You know what? If we don't hear from you, we know you're struggling. And when you don't respond to us, we know you're struggling. You know, but I, I do, I really applaud you. Cause, and 10 pounds, I think you're still doing great. It is, but it isn't. But you know what, you realized it because some people don't realize it till it's 40 or 50 pounds. You should only weigh once a week. Well, Dr. Yadigar, his personality and your personality and your personality, you realize the personality associated with the doctor from here to the, to the main office staff, you know, it, it isn't BS that, that you guys are posting on Facebook. If you're struggling, give me a call. We'll work it out. Yeah. You guys got to think back from the day you got discharged. What other doctor in your entire life that said, there's my cell phone number? 
you have basically it up for the rest of your life. 24 7, every time you need me, call me. He's not BSing, he means it. And his staff means it. That's what he's there for. If I was struggling, well, I'll say the next month anyway, but even if I wasn't saying I was struggling, I, I would just need to call Liz or talk to Abigail. Liz, I need to come talk to you for an hour. She'll say, When can you be in? I know you'll do that. Mm -hmm. He'll say, Steve, when can you be in? How about Tuesday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon? Okay, I'll be there. And Dr. Yadigar is the same way. And that's how staff, stuff, staff is. So if, if we have in Facebook, one of the posts on Facebook is the same thing. People post their struggling. You're really trying to get their input to help that individual out. Here's how you get back on track. Here's what you're doing. And there's so much feedback on there. You know, and I didn't come last month. I missed twice this year. And when I come in, it's, it's strange because it's, it's, we're not being here. You know, and we asked, where's Steve? Yeah, <laughs> where's Steve? <laughs> so, I mean, anybody who is afraid to call Dr. Yadisgar's office and say, don't, because this person, he's not going to shame you. He's going to support you. No matter if you're 20 pounds overweight, 10 pounds overweight, or your goal, he's going to support you, no matter what. And you know what? Remember one thing, and like Mary said, sometimes goal is just a number. Yes. You know, and sometimes... I never hit my goal. Sometimes, sometimes you may never get to that quote unquote goal, you know, right. but there's, and I talk about this a lot. There are so many other goals that you can reach and milestones that you can get to just from the surgery. I mean, did you take medication before your surgeries? Did you guys take medicine? Is it gone? Yep. Or most of it gone? Yep. Do you have to wear the stupid <clears throat> mask? Is it gone? Oh, no, your CPAP machine? CPAP. You have to wear a mask oh. and sleep apnea. Yeah. Did you have to wear that? Is it gone? Are you giving yourself injections of insulin? Yeah. See? There you go. See? Yeah. Every little yeah. every little thing that goes away, yeah. guess what? That's 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 success right there. No, no eyeballs. Eye, eyeballs. <laughs> eyeballs turn a quarter cup into a cup. Your body's kind of readjusting. It'll happen. It'll happen. I don't know about anybody else, but I know I would lose a bunch of weight and then I would stop for like a week and a half, two weeks. And panic. And panic. Going, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? And then I would get on the scale and I'm down 11 pounds. You know, I remember that, and that's how I did it. I did it, I mean, everything was hanging on me like a shroud, but I would get, I wouldn't, I'd weigh myself, it's like nothing. Okay, I'm gonna weigh myself one more time. Nothing, okay, and I'm gonna wait a few more days, and then I get on the scale, bam, 11 pounds is gone. I think you need to, some of it you need to measure out, okay. the other part you need to let go of the scale. Okay. Put it in the trunk of your car and take, go get it Sunday morning and mm -hmm. go get weighed. I got us in trouble at the gym yesterday <laughs> because the, the, the people in my group, oh, okay. it's because my trainer does not allow us to say, I call it the C word, can't. Uh -huh. And we were talking about, we were doing an exercise, oh, we were doing side lunges and they were very isolated. And I said, you know, this reminds me of when I was, I ride my bike up a hill and I'm really hammering up the hill and I'm like, <gasps> You know, trying to get up the hill, I said, and sometimes I think I can't. And she goes, that's it, 40 burpees oh. with triple push-ups. Oh, oh, no. The whole These group. The devil. They, they are the devil. <laughs> they, are the, they are the devil. But we'd already done 40 burpees with double push-ups because someone else got us. Yeah. Oh, so I, I bought us triple push-ups, <laughs> let me tell you. So speaking of that, I want to, in November, and I, I haven't gotten a chance to get it to you. I haven't even told Dr. Yadigar yet. Um, I created a, they're doing the heart walk here at Marie Kerr Park, you know, where we did our, our color run. So they're having the heart walk November 5th. Um, there's fundraising attached to it, but we're working on getting a big group, you know, on the floor where you all were when you had your surgery. Mm -hmm. So we've, we're calling the team through, it's the heartwalkla.org is the website. And then it's under Palmdale Regional Medical Center. And then there's a, um, a group, it's called Joint and Spine and Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery Department. So I'm team captaining of that and I want you guys all to join us um, because you actually get to walk with some of your nurses too. Oh, that's neat. So there's ner the nurses are signing up. I'm gonna see if I can get Dr. Yadigar to sign up. You know, there is fundraising, but I mean, 
our team goal is a thousand dollars but I'm sure we're gonna have a whole lot of people on there that are raising money um, you'll get t-shirts from the hospital and everything like that for the heart walk so if you guys would like to do it it's November 5th you don't it's it's only it's only a 5k it's 3.1 miles at Marie Kerr Park we did the color run there it was it was fun it was fun it's it's only 3.1 miles and it's just basically around the park around the outside of the park and back it's it it's 3.1 miles and you know what if you've got if you've got babies or grandkids and you want to throw them in a stroller and bring them with them you can bring them so join us and you know what and and that's one more thing that's an accomplishment mm -hmm. you know you just said I, I'm not I'll have to build up to it you know I have total confidence that you'll be there mm -hmm. you know another fun thing to do it's usually Thanksgiving morning it's hard to believe that we're talking about that like <laughs> it's just around the corner but Thanksgiving morning at the Y they do the turkey trot it's a 5k oh, you can that? walk it really? it's a walk it's a, you can walk it you can run it mm -hmm. you know you just I think it's like $25 to sign up but there's so many different little things that you can do mm -hmm. and I believe and I, I'm gonna hope that others believe sometimes you just need to step a little bit out of your comfort zone just a little bit out of that comfort zone and go mm -hmm. and yeah. you'll surprise yourself you did it twice didn't you yeah, yeah. so you know I mean if you take that minute and step out of your comfort zone, it's a whole different world. And you know, I remember different things that I've stepped out of my comfort zone. I remember when I ran my first marathon. I'll never forget it. It was in Hawaii. And I remember coming over the finish line. My arms were in flapping glory. And I was coming over the finish line like that. And I was laughing and I was crying because it was like, I did it. I did it. And then I started thinking, they, before you start, they tell you that you're in the, I can't remember what percentage of the people in the whole United States, or even the world, I can't remember, that have done that. And it's like, you're the zero point something percent of people who've done that. And it was like, wow. You know, I never looked at it that way. You know, I was basically surviving out there. But, you know, um, so a little 3.1 mile stepping out of your comfort zone, I think you'll be able to do it fine. No one says you have to go fast. You know, I mean, we did the color run with my husband. Remember, he had the broken wing? He had a broken shoulder when we did the color run. Wow. So, yeah. So I just want you guys to think about that. I think it would be fun. I'm glad you're saying that because I have people who, oh, I'm gonna go back to work after a week. Hmm. And that's exactly what I really try to stress, you know, as a matter of fact, when I did class today, someone says, well, I'm going to go back to work after two weeks. And I, and, until you get to that point, and the one thing I tell people is that you have to be careful with that. If you go back to work and you've been using state disability and stuff, you just may completely mess up your whole state disability. You may have to have another qualifying period if you go back to work, punch a clock, and now you're here and now you're out again. I always try to let them know that that could be problematic for you. And I and I, I keep I keep harping on that. I harp on it all the time. You've got to write it down. You have to have accountability for the food that's going in your mouth. You know, you don't have to be obsessive about it, but you have to have knowledge. Once you start losing that, or any awareness, you, you can get lost. And I actually, because on like my, my, my hard workout days, my, my three workout days that are really intense, I have more protein on those days. So those are in containers that match each other. And those are stacked in the fridge on, and I get the little, the little blue um, painter's tape and I put a B on it, which is boot camp day. Or I'll put B, C, boot camp, that's a boot camp meal. You know, so, so I know. And, and a lot of times for people, you know, I think meal planning is, is huge. I, and you, you go to work every day, right? I just you just retired. Do you wonder like, congrats, I can't wait. Yeah.
Don't you, though, kind of look and go, oh, what am I going to eat? What am I going to take for work? Anybody else do that? What am I going to take? I'm going to tell you, if you meal plan, you guys, your life is going to be a lot easier. All you need to do is grab and go. Grab and go. I bring, I bring about, I bring Monday boot camp food, um, Tuesday regular food, Wednesday boot camp food, and then I, Thursday, Friday, I bring regular food, well, not regular, but non boot camp portions. Okay, you go to work at 11 in the morning till 11 at night. Okay, so you get up, you have your breakfast, you have your protein drink, you plan what you would have for lunch, you plan another protein drink, you plan what you have for dinner, and you have another protein drink. It's all in your cooler. It's all in your cooler. You know what I do with the caramel? I'll make a cup of coffee uh -huh. in my Keurig and I'll just make a small, you know, just a little small one. And then I put it over ice and I let it kind of the ice melt a little bit. And then I just pour the, um, the caramel in there. So as I was saying, we have just a, such a, a mixed variety tonight of where people are at. You know, we've had a few bounce backs with weight, you know, but you're here, you're looking, you're asking. Well, I put my wedding dress on and took a picture and sent it to my daughter and she put it on Facebook. I thought maybe she was like visiting. No, I'm going up there Saturday. Oh, okay. I'm going Saturday to see the kids. So what are you guys talking about? Um, we have we have struggles. We have struggles. We have weight gain. We have courage. We have courage. courage. <laughs> we have courage. We've had struggles. They and all courage. look good to me, though. Okay, and I, you know I believe what? you. And you know what? We applaud her for coming. We applaud her for coming, and her for coming, because guess what? That's the first step of saying help. I need help. So. So. Do you have any idea why? Because, you know, I, I want to tell you, every 10 years, the average weight gain physiologically is about 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. So don't lose sight of that, okay? You kind of go back to the drawing board and look at your nutritional intake. Which we talked about. Right, and often you'll be able to see the thing that stands out and it's just going to take time to get, you know, that evaluation and then gradually over the course of two weeks or so, you'll get a pattern emerging. Uh, and you have to reintroduce those concepts that you remember before you went to surgery, you learned about making sure that you have your three meals, that you don't miss meal. I think two, three months ago when I briefly was in one of these meetings, we talked about the uh, November visit where at the American Society there were a lot of medical people talking about nutrition and a lot of the research papers they presented was emphasizing the importance of breakfast. It was something that, you know, interestingly they claimed, you know, your parents always told you, now you can believe it because it's been validated by, by research. So if you miss out a meal, especially the morning one, the problem is that calorific intake early in the day allows your metabolism, it's like a pilot. You start you a pilot the and it, in the car. it ignites it and allows you to do more. And of course, as you do more, you burn more. So it's important to have that. And also they commented that a good night's sleep, and we kind of know that, but again, it's been validated. And uh, eight hours, six to eight hours is really very important. Uh, the other thing that they pointed out was, and I see this, and I actually have this conversation with some of the patients that we see, night shift workers really have a hard time, it's a struggle, and I don't know if any of you he's do a, night shift. He's a shift worker, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. More of a concern is the night graveyard night. shifts. But he's trying to figure out, Right. wow, that's, my work starts in basically late morning, and it goes till almost midnight, right. so it goes, you know, all day and half the night. Yeah. And trying to figure out how he balances those meals, especially on days you're not working. And I've had that conversation with my night shift workers. How do you balance your meals? And people who've been doing it for a while now, how do you balance your meals 
when you're a regular Monday through Friday daylight person and now you're a night person, how do you balance that? How do you get, because I know when I worked night shift, oh gosh, I think I was eating nine times a day and it wasn't nine times a day good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I asked them, how do you do it? They said, well, I have a, usually have a protein drink when I get up. Um, I'll eat a little bit, you know, later in the day. And then I, I, they tell me that they'll consume most of their meals on the night shift. But it's that shifting all the time that can throw off your, your circadian rhythms. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even beyond the habituality of the uh, routines, physiologically your metabolism is not tuned in for night work. You're more, you know, as a majority of, of course, uh, us know, we are daytime creatures and so your body is tuned to that. So when you do night shift, your hormones don't really lock in to the change the way that they should optimally. So those patients physiologically are at a bit of a disadvantage. So it's very important to plan, make sure that on the shifts you're eating the correct combination of foods. And when you really are going to be looking at your intake calorifically and look at your profile, it's important not to only be getting the right nutrition in terms of number of calories, but the composition of those nutritions, you know. So patients sometimes have 1,200 or 1,400 calories, but it may not be proportioned correctly and in terms of protein, fats, or calories. carbs. So you have to look at the composition, you have to look at the total calorific intake, and uh, you know, when you're five years out, six years out, a lot of patients are maxed out on the protein supplements, you know, it's not palatable, it's not desirable. So I would often encourage patients that really there is a lot in the market. The buzz the last six months or a year has been on vegetable-based protein supplements like rice and pea. I don't have personal experience with it in the sense that I don't have a lot of patients who are consuming that, but certainly there is some interest in these uh, as a palatable supplement as opposed to your basic whey. But look around and you know, try different things. You may find things that you didn't like before that you like now. And it's so important to maintain a continuous infusion of protein throughout the day because it helps give you that satiety. It allows your absorption to be steady, keeps the blood sugars it steady. Don't, you don't get the roller coaster. You don't get peaks sugars. and troughs. You won't get cravings as much and you tend to not get to the next meal ravenous, so your portions actually remain small, and you end the day with that 12, 1400 ideal window of calories and your 80 grams or more of protein. So you gotta do all of those, and then you gotta do your exercise routines. So, you know, again, patients, there are limitations. Often they say, look, I do walk, and I do take time off of my breaks, and I go and do stuff, and that's great, but a good indicator is dabbling your heart rate. So make sure you measure your heart rate at the beginning of your exercise session. You measure it at the end of your exercise session. You want to dabble it. So that's significant. And if you get 80 beats a minute and you're up to 110, it's not bad, but it's not good enough. So you got to work on that. So those are things that seem to help patients get that little weight gain that they've had reversed. And then add some probiotics. Again, this has been an ongoing interest over the last five years that these organisms, these bacteria, seem to help with the uh, digestion of the GI tract, the metabolism, and in a couple of the papers that looked at that showed that they add about 6% perhaps of added weight loss. So you can certainly try that. And the other thing that we've started using probably in the last two years is, again, this is literature based, that sometimes when patients get to that plateau after the second year or so, or get weight put on, uh, you can try some drug therapy. Uh, again, these are not things you want to stay on for long term. Uh, these are stimulants that help with your metabolism and kind of 30 days or 60 days get the patient going. They may affect their appetite as well. Uh, and then that in context of getting all the other elements in place helps them make some progress. But if you are not going to be doing all the right things and then aim to get weight loss with an addition of a drug therapy, that's not sustainable and that's not strategically optimal. So you've got to really plan it well. So when I see some of you guys and we talked about that, I said, look, you know, two, three months, you want to change those patterns and then if you don't make progress, 
despite that, then we can perhaps introduce it. And if you make progress, then just keep going until we reach the next stumbling block. So you want to certainly consider that. But look, it, it's an ongoing challenge, okay? And we really have to not lose sight of the fact that uh, it's never a single item. It's always multifactorial. It was from the get-go, genetics, behavioral patterns, environmental issues. And you go through it layer by layer, and you can't do it all in one go. And it takes time. There's no magic bullet, unfortunately, for these situations. Surgery, we know, helps. It does sustain, but it's not 100%. I mean, um, the November conference, when they presented 20 years of literature on gastric bypass versus 14 years on the sleeve gastrectomy showed that the bypass patients have 65% excess weight loss sustained at 20 years. That's a very good, and the sleeves 50-55%. So that 10% margin of difference stays from the very beginning. And uh, you know, 55% excess weight loss is terrific. So is 65 at 20 years or at 15 years, but they're not 100%. So a lot of people regain some, but the key is to be aware, to look at things, to evaluate things, make sure that it's, you know, kind of watchful approach rather than panic button approach. And then suddenly, you know, you start to get all depressed and start to hide away. and. You really got to be very objective, very methodical, and just go through it very systematically. And uh, patients often ask, you know, is my pouch bigger, or should I have another surgery? The answer is when we look at, again, back to literature, these pouches, they do enlarge a little, but they're not going to be 30, 40 like ounces. Like your regular stomach. You know, so they go up from 6 to 8 or 10 ounces at the most. Uh, and revision surgery to convert, let's say, a sleeve to a bypass uh, may give the patient a little more weight loss. But again, if the behavioral patterns are not established in the right way, over five years after that, they'll regain. And, you know, you just look at the literature, it's there. So you have to be very educated and guided about your decision making as opposed to just knee jerk and say, okay, you know what? And often, often there is a trigger. I mean, I can tell you stress is a big trigger. You know, patients get stressed about things, everything falls off the bandwagon. I mean, I had a mom in my office yesterday or the day before. You know, she's got four kids running around every day, has no time for herself. She has a job she keeps down. She has the kids she runs around. Weekends are occupied. She's five years post-surgery, hasn't had a single follow-up, which is always a bad thing, since her surgery. And she was 30, 40 pounds heavier. And she had no awareness of what her calorie intake was, no awareness of what her uh, exercise routines were offering her. What... So, you know, a situation like that, in a way, is a good thing because there's so much you can do to it. If she had said that, look, I'm eating right, I'm doing everything well, and I don't know what's going on. That's a much harder problem. So often you go through these steps and you find things very easily. And then you start to address them one by one and try and fix them. And you just got to persist. You got to become very tenacious and persistent. You got to become you know, a thorn on your own side. You got to keep at it. But I'll draw the line in saying that you don't want to become obsessed by it. Because that itself it carries its own problems. You, you have to have awareness. You know, I yeah. mean, one of the things, if you're struggling, you have to have awareness and look to see, number one, what are you doing? What, what are you doing every day? Do you, know, do you know what you eat? Do you know how much you eat? And, and sometimes, sometimes that's the pivotal factor. You're stressed, you're eating, but there's that, that pivotal thing is you're just eating and you're not having awareness. Basically, that's called mindful eating. And sometimes you have to have awareness of your mindful eating. I'm reading a book right now, and I honestly can't remember the author. I'm sorry, I was, I'll tell you. But I'm going to finish it over the next two weeks, and I'm definitely going to copy some stuff out of it and bring it up either through list or support group or myself. It's interesting. I was just waiting in pharmacy line, getting a prescription filled, and happened to catch my eye. It's a small paperback book. 
60 ways to reduce your cholesterol. Well, I only know a dozen, so I'm very curious to know <laughs> what 60 ways are. But obviously, you see there's so much stuff out there, and there may be simple things, and it may be working for some, but not for everybody. But uh, I, I, I'm very intrigued by this book. So, do you know, again, stuff comes up, you get to read around, and it's very critical to just look at yourself analytically, but not obsess over it. And again, remember, as we get older, metabolically things change. It's allow, you're allowed to gain some weight. But the concern is, if you're in the first year or second year and you didn't reach target or you gained weight, then there is something going on. And also don't forget, you know, you're not immune to developing, God forbid, metabolic problems now. Patients who have had surgery develop thyroid problems. They never had it before. Not because of the weight loss, not because of the surgery. Just thyroid disease can happen any time in your life. It's just life. You know, life. and you know, if you follow with your primary, that always is something that you should bear in mind. You know, is there any other clinical signs and symptoms that maybe have developed some, you know, weakened thyroid function, and that your doctors can look at that, and if that's the case, they may need to give you adjustment, or, or there may thyroid. be other stuff going on. You know, patients may go through menopause and start gaining weight, so there may be hormonal changes. Again, these are some physiological, so don't lose sight of those things. Uh, but if all else is the same, often you can find triggers. Summertime, hydration time, God knows how many of patients we see are having challenges drink, with drink. that. Yeah. That's, 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 that's If you're in the Facebook, everybody here should be in the Facebook group. I've been Liz been. has been at every oh, day. And I've missed today so far. Every day asking us how much water have you had and telling us where she is and challenging us to be drinking. So if you're not in the group, you're missing out on Liz coaching us. Hmm? You need to you talk to Mary. You have to be invited. Oh. You have to be invited. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he was a um, ER doc and then became a nursing facility doc. Oh, interestingly, there was another article I read, just, just FYI, nothing to do with obesity, but it, 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 it really slips your spirit. It was about a New York doc who had worked as a very successful trauma ER doctor for many years at one of the very busy hospitals in New York, and then somehow decides to get involved into care of, care of elderly, and he really goes to some of these nursing homes and sees how miserable these patients are. They're all kind of sitting there, dozing off, and falling off their chairs, and you know, uh, calling the nurse's button and waiting for the wheelchair and just totally depressed him. And he had this idea that, look, you know what, I'm going to introduce a number of items into this nursing facility. And I guess either he got involved with the management or maybe he had a share in the process, I don't know. So he starts to bring a number of things. These things were, he started to bring animals, dogs and cats and birds and hamsters and rabbits. Then he started to bring gardens, mobile gardens, vegetable gardens and fruit gardens and all sorts of things. So over the course of the year, they engaged this community, the elderly in this nursing home, and they had all these interactions with the animals and with the gardening aspects. So within a year, they shipped all the wheelchairs out of the nursing home because the nurse, because the patients didn't want to sit down, be wheeled anymore. They wanted, they were so motivated and enjoyed these things so much. The uh, infection rate went down, fatality and loss of these patients in this nursing home went down. And it was because they felt a purpose, they felt a connection, they were motivated. And I thought that was really a big message then. This was just one example, how important our mind is to the entire functionality that if you really get that zest and that impulse how much better we can do in terms of our overall health so i, I was fascinated by that i thought wow what a great great thing to have done and you know apparently they're going very strong still and his model was used by many of the nursing homes subsequently 
there. So I'm sure if you look it up, I don't remember the name. But I'm, I'm getting my memory busted here. <laughs> <laughs> 51. You are not 51. You're still 50. All right, 55. <laughs> I, no, no, I didn't you. take it. Well, let me tell you that. But I'm, I'm settled into you. it now. No. It's, you know, it's just a number. And thank you for your time to make the trip all the way up here and kind of contributing because we learn from you all, and I know patients learn from each other in this session, so they're important as part of the whole thing. So thank you for participating. All righty. Mm -hmm. Any, any other issues that we need to go over or everyone's good? Good. Lab work. I want to address the issue with lab work. If you're going to do your lab work, say your appointment's in three months, okay? You want to do your lab work a month before your appointment. What happens is, is there's vitamin levels and the lab doesn't run your vitamin level, your vitamin level, your vitamin level, your vitamin and my level separately. They wait till they have a certain amount and they run them together. And they batch so them they once batch, twice a week. Yeah. yeah, so it takes a while to get those results back. So be sure you do your labs a month before every appointment, okay? Just so you're sure that they're back. Cause, and they're, sometimes they're, you know, a little, little dribble in here, a little bit of dribble in here. And it's, it's really in your best interest to have them done so he can address those at your appointment. We have a September meeting. Yes. Okay, and do you have a topic for... No, you can, maybe we can go do Zumba and you can Zumba dance with everybody. Yeah. I sure need it, but okay. I'm only good. kidding. I don't know. I have to. I that have might to. be that might be a good thing. Okay, so let's see. We'll we'll put it up and announce it. Oh no, I have to. I have to find a Zumba Zumba instructor. Okay. So. Um. All right. Sounds good. Have a great summer. It's good to see you guys. Okay. Thank you again very much. Great.